All right, here we go. Here we go. We are live. I am priest and officer. I'm a priest and officer of 5,000 warrior of the IRCPK DC school under Commander Jehanna. Teaching blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians that you are the real Jews. All right, one, the, um, I'm starting a new series where, you know, we're going into Islam. Why am I going into Islam? Because our people follow this religion, right? And as uh, you know, a priest and officer of the ISUPK, no matter where our people are, we gotta go and get them. You understand know what I mean? If our people are at the bottom of a cesspool, guess what? I gotta put on the scuba diving gear and dive in there. If our people are in hell, <laughs> we're going down to hell to look for them. You understand know I mean? That is a the burden of a priest and prophet in the ISUPK under Command Jan Hadu. That's what I mean. So I have to jump in the cesspool, man, and go and and learn what this religion is teaching to show blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians that we have no business in this. That's what I mean. I have to go and, and learn that. One second. So we're going to get right into it. Right, the first place we're gonna go, we're gonna go right into the Quran. We're gonna go right into the Quran. Actually, you know what? Before we go there, I want to pull a very important um verse. So when we teach in this class, one thing I want to make clear, right? One thing I want to make clear, and we're gonna go to the Bible to make this very clear, as clear as possible. Give me one sec. We're gonna go to Let's go into the book of Psalms. If you're following with me, we're going to go to the book of Psalms, chapter 147. Why am I going to this, this um, verse here, verse 20? Why am I going here? I'm going here to make sure um, one thing clear um, for the Arabs, for the Pakistanis, for the East Indians, for the Africans, and all the people who are not um Blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians. When I say Blacks, I'm talking about the Black Americans who have no identity. I'm talking about the Haitians. I'm talking about the Trinidadians, the Jamaicans, the Guyanese, um, those from Barbados, you know, all the people with no real identity before slavery. That's what I'm talking about, right? Outside of those people, I don't care what other nations worship. The Arabs can worship their God. I don't care. I'm not here to discourage you and tell you, hey, your God is not right and come and follow Jesus. That's not what I'm here to do. That's what I mean. In the books of the um of the Arabs itself, it tells you Christ did not come for the Arabs. Moses did not come for the Arabs, come for the Arabs. That's, that. That's why they worship um the Prophet Muhammad, the so-called Prophet Muhammad, because he's the only one that they claim came for them. That's what I mean. And he's not a prophet, by the way, but that we'll get into that. Um, but today, I want to show you guys something. Um, let's go straight into Psalms chapter 147, verse 20. This is for everybody who wants to debate about whether the Bible is legit or not, but the Bible is never sent for you. God says in the Bible, let's speak of God. He has not, let's start with verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob. He who is the he, the almighty God. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Just a little education. Jacob and Israel are the same person. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So this is not two people. So again, 19, he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his, his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. He has not dealt so with any nation. So that being said, uh, Aaron has no business in the Bible. You know, I hear him saying the Bible is corrupt. The Bible is never sent to you. you. You're not qualified to rate the Bible, to you know judge the Bible. You're not qualified to know that. The Bible is never sent to you. This is a book for Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians about Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Right? So that's the first thing I wanted to share 
to make it clear in case anybody has a problem with what, oh they want to come in battle and you know and show that the bible is this the bible is that the bible is not for you you're not invited to it right so that's just to make that clear now we're gonna go straight into the quran right we're gonna go straight into the quran uh first place we're gonna go is going to be Surah chapter 14. Let me see. Uh, one sec. Let me just take my, my face off the screen so you can follow along. Surah chapter 14, verse 4. Right, so this is dear God Allah speaking. Here it says, if you follow, and we sent not, he were not, right, and we sent not a messenger except with the language of his people. Listen to that. This is dear God for you, black people who want to go and follow Islam. What language was Islam revealed in? Arabic, you see? Right now, what I'm reading is a translation, but this is the language it was written right here. I'm highlighting it. This is the Arabic, right? Where it says, and we sent not a messenger except with the language of his people. Who's the his? The person who sent it. So number one, they come in the language of the people, but his people, meaning that he has to be from that bloodline, that family of people. Remember, we just read about our family of people, where God said what? He has not dealt so with any other nation. That's the God in the Bible. Well, this God here from the Quran is mimicking it, but he's saying, and we sent not a messenger except with the language of his people in order that he might make the message clear for them. Brothers don't speak no Arabic, man. I try to bismillah, be really lie. Nah, <laughs> you don't speak Arabic. You don't even know what the hell you're saying. You know what I mean? You take the Arabic language and, and even the text and translate it in a way where you could pronounce the words, but you can't read the straight Arabic. That's why any battle you ever see amongst a Arabs about the Quran, it always ends up in a conversation or a com competition of who speaks the best Arabic, because that's who's gonna understand it. You understand? And so start getting thrown, saying your Arabic is choppy. You can't read proper Arabic. Look how you pronounce that word, why? Because they speak that language. Again, and we sent not a messenger except with the language of his people in order that he might make the message clear for them. Then Allah misleads whom he will and guides whom he wills, which is another can of worms. And he is the almighty, the all wise. That's that verse there. So we get that. Do you get that? Did you get that? He has not, he has not sent a message except in the language of his people. In fact, we're going to go to another verse in the Quran. That's going to show you how seriously he takes what he's saying here. Uh, supposedly, right? Dear God. So we're going to go to Surah. Surah actually means chapter, right? Surah 19. Sorry, Surah 17, verses 95. Watch what he says here. This is how serious he takes it. If there were on earth angels walking about in peace and security, we would certainly have sent down for them from the heaven an angel as a messenger. You get that? He's telling you. Remember, we just read, he has not sent a messenger except in the language of his people, or in the tongue of his people. He's telling you so much, he's taking this serious, that if there was an angel walking around on earth, he wouldn't send them the so-called prophet Muhammad. He would have to send him what? Who would he send? 
we shall certainly have sent down for them from the heaven an angel as a messenger, meaning somebody of his kind, somebody of his like. Yes, I mean, not somebody who does not speak his language, does not look like him, does not is not his peer. He would have sent an angel down. That's how seriously he takes it. You understand me? Is the Prophet Muhammad of your kind, black man, Hispanic man? He is not. You understand me? He is not of your kind. We got more verses um, for you. We're going to go to Surah, chapter 42, verse 7. So, chapter 42, Surah is the chapter, right? Which is 42, and we're going to go to verse 7. Surah just means chapter, again. It's not a chapter, it means chapter. It's like saying chapter 42, verse 7. Right? And here we go. And thus we have revealed to you, O Prophet, a Quran in Arabic that you may warn who? The mother of towns. Where's the mother of towns? Mecca. And all around it, how did it get to Philadelphia? How did it get to Rikers Island? It was never sent to, to Rikers Island, you understand what I mean? To, to Almira, to Green, to all these jails, to Chicago, you know, to Maryland, to DC. It was never sent there. Alas, and, and thus we have revealed to you, O Prophet, a Quran in Arabic that you may warn the mother of the towns, which is Mecca, and all around it, and warn them of the day of assembling, of which there is no doubt. You understand what I mean? That's who we were sent to warn. Right? Let's get some more. So we're going to definitely show to you that this has nothing to do with you. Watch this one here. This one here should make it very clear for you. We're going to go one chapter up. Chapter 42. I'm sorry, 41, verse 44. 41, 44. All right. And if we have sent this Quran in a foreign language, listen to this good. Listen to this good. If we had sent this Quran in a foreign language other than Arabic, then would have they would have said, who's they, the Arabic people who the Quran was sent to? They would have said, why are not its verses explained in detail in our own language? That's freedom right there. That's a, that's a man who's not a slave, who doesn't have to listen to a slave master teach him anything. Why are not its verses explained in detail in our language? What? A book not in Arabic and the messenger in Arab? This is the Quran. You understand what I mean? The people who it was sent to them would have demanded, and this, by the way, this is Allah, their God talking. He is already acknowledging that these people have a right you understand what I mean? These people have a right to a profit from themselves. That's why he's he, uh, alive, Najee here. Again, and if we had sent this as a Quran in a foreign language other than Arabic, they would have said, why are not its verses explained in detail in our language? What? A book not in Arabic? And the messenger not in Arab say it is for those who believe and God and healing, and as for those who the blah 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 blah. All right, that's the part we need right here. You know what I mean, not in Arabic and the messenger not in Arab. Let me just go ahead and read the whole verse because Muslims like to say, Oh, you're not reading the whole thing as if we missed something out. Let <laughs> me just finish reading it. Because Muslims always try to act like something was left out and, and I'm not getting the context. The rest has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I'll read it. Say, it is for those who believe a God in a healing. Who are those who believe? The Arabs. And as for those who disbelieve, 
Who are those who disbelieve? The Arabs. Why? <laughs> because that's the only people we're sent to. There is heaviness, deafness in their ears, and in and it the Quran is blindness for them. They are those who are called from a place far away, so they neither listen nor understand. You understand? All the day, there, day, there, day, there is talking about who? It's who's it talking about? The Arabs. I mean, they would have said, who's they? The Arabs. You understand what I mean? That's the Arabs who, who would have said. All right. Uh, let's keep going. We're going to go to Surah chapter 44. It keeps getting worse. You understand what I mean? It keeps getting worse. We dug all the way down this cesspool, man. Why? Because we love our people. You understand? We love our people. That's why we did it. Surah chapter 44, verse 58. Certainly, we have made this Quran easy in your tongue in order that they may remember. Tongue is another word for language. In your language, your tongue. You understand what I mean? I'm going to do something for you real quick. Let me see. I was going to I forgot how to change the because there's different um okay let's go to Yusuf Ali oh, let's go to Dr. Mustafa here it is indeed we have this is just, this is the same Quran right the Arabic wording doesn't change the Arabic wording doesn't change but the English translation changed indeed we have made this Quran easy in your own language. I, 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 I switch to this one because I don't like all the brackets. I mean, this is more simple for me. Indeed, we have made this Quran easy in your own language, O Prophet. So perhaps they will be mindful. I mean, whose language is it talking about? Is it, talk, is it talking about Ebonics? <laughs> whose language is it talking about? Is, is it talking about the language that you speak? Black man in Philadelphia, I see you all over the place with your Kufi zone, your high water zone. Whose language is it talking about? It's talking about the Arabic language. It's talking about the Arabic language. Why? Because it's for the Arabs. Let's keep going more. Let's get to Surah chapter 12. I know this is repetitive, but I'm trying to put it into your brains that this is not for you. Surah chapter 12. And we're going to go to verse 2. Surah 12, verse 2. Indeed, we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran so that you, who's the you? Who's the you? That you may understand. Who are you talking about? Who is it talking about? Hmm? Who's the you? That's the, that's the thing. That's the connection you have to make. If God is speaking, he keeps saying you, 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 they, there. Who is he talking about? Is he talking about your forefathers? Were your forefathers invited to this? You know what's funny? Every prophet and so-called prophet. So, for example, real prophets with real credentials, real certified prophets like Moses, like, you know, Isaiah, Elijah, you know, all these prophets. It's funny how they only came for everybody after they died. When they were on earth, it was not for everybody. Same thing with the so-called prophet Muhammad. Now, all of a sudden, he's for everybody. Since when? Did he speak your language? If, if, you, if you met the prophet, if your, if your people back when this so-called prophet was alive. If your people ran into him, could he have taught them anything? He could barely speak his own name. He couldn't even read. What message could he give them besides the sword? Besides enslaving them like he did? We're going to get into all that. Not tonight, but like I said, this is a series. We're going to get into a lot of topics about Islam because we dived in there. And we found all the laundry. We found all the dirt. And we're going to bring them all out. 
But today we're gonna tonight we're just gonna start off by showing you you have no business in the Quran. You understand what I mean? You have no business in the Quran. Indeed, we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran so that you may understand. It's sent as an Arabic Quran in the language of the Arabs for the Arabs to understand. I mean, give. Uh, I'm gonna go next to Surah chapter 26. Let's go to Surah 26. Let's see what that says. Surah 26, verse 198 and 199. Surah 26, 198. Had we revealed it to a non Arab who would then recite it to the deniers? In a fluid Arabic, still they will not have believed in it. You understand what I mean? This is saying, had we revealed it to a non-Arab, a person who's not an Arab, meaning Moses, <laughs> to make it simple for you, had we revealed it to uh, the man they call Jesus Christ, had we revealed it to anybody who's not an Arab, again, this is the God of the Arabs insisting that the prophet of the Arabs be a prophet. Had we revealed it to a non-Arab who would then recite it to the deniers in fluent Arabic, meaning what? Meaning that if an Arab, if, if a non-Arab spoke fluent Arabic, they would still have the right to deny the Quran or God's so-called God's word. You understand? Why? because they have to receive it from a people of their own. Now, let me ask you a question. Black man, Hispanic man, Native American Indian man. How come we the only ones who accept prophets not of our own? How can we accept that white Jesus as God? How can we accept that every prophet in the Bible is painted as white when they're black, they're your people? How can we accept the Prophet Muhammad if his people didn't have to accept us? These people, his people didn't have to accept us. But we have to accept him. Have we revealed? And mind you, this is God's word, supposedly. God's word is telling you if it came from somebody who's not an Arab, never mind is God's word. You would think God's word, no matter how it comes, if a rock spoke God's word, if a pebble if a mountain, if a tree spoke God's word, who are you to deny it? Yet their God Allah has given them a path to deny it if it's not from another Arab. Understand? That's what he's telling you here. That's exactly what he's telling you here. Uh, let's get um, Surah chapter 12, verse 2. I think we got that already, right? We definitely got that already. We're going to go to chapter 2, verse 129. 2, verse 129. Our Lord raised from among them a messenger who will recite to them your revelations. Keyword here, raised from where? Among them. Among who? The Arabs. This is a request to, uh, to their God, Allah. Our Lord, raised from among them a messenger who will recite to them your revelations. Teach them the book and wisdom and purify them. Indeed, you alone are almighty, all wise. You understand know I me? Mean? This is them exercising their right to have an Arab God and an Arab uh, Arab prophet. You understand what I mean? But you, but, but let me guess, you you don't deserve a prophet that's that's from you. Hmm? You deserve a prophet that's from you, man. You deserve the prophets of the Bible. Though we're gonna get into all that, but this series here is not about. The Bible. We have we teach class on the Bible all the time. This here is specifically to expose the Quran 
but not being a book for Black, Hispanics, Native American Indians. Again, disclaimer, if you're an Arab, knock yourself out. You're an African, I don't care. If you are East Indian, go ahead. If you are a Pakistani, have fun. If you are from the Gaza Strip, have a bowl. But Blacks, Hispanics, never make Indians have no business in this book here. And he's telling you, this is a book. The book itself is telling you that you have no business in there. I mean, uh, let me get... Uh, We're going to get, so we're going to go away from the Quran. No, we get we gave a lot of verses in the Quran, but we're going to pull away from the Quran for a sec. We're going to go into what they call the Hadiths. So the Hadiths are uh, records collected, and there are hundreds of thousands of Hadiths. These are records collected by people who were around Muhammad, the so-called prophet. When he was speaking and it recorded his speakings. Now, a lot of people don't like to go into the hadiths. Uh, in fact, some deny the hadiths altogether. Why? Because this is very embarrassing, <laughs> right? The hadiths have some very embarrassing things in there that we're going to get into. We're going to pull all the laundry out. You understand? I mean, these are their books. When you when you study this, you just remember this is not your books. You didn't write this. The, the Israelites, the ISUPK didn't write this. We pull in their records. You understand what I mean? And a lot of, um, especially a lot of black Muslims, they deny the hadiths because they know how ugly it gets in there. So they'd rather go to the Quran, which is an empty book. Right? It doesn't give you much details on anything. Like a pamphlet. It's a small book. But the hadiths go into some detail, man. So we're going to pull this hadith here. It is... I'm going to introduce you to the Hadith. Here we go. Here we go, right? So this Hadith here, first thing you want to see, you see this word here? Sahih. Sahih. <laughs> you guys speak, say like they say. This word means it is valid. It is strong. And then most Sunni Muslims will accept this because it's Sahih. That means their scholars verified this, right? Now, this is Sahih Muslim 821A in book six of the Hadith 334, right? It says, this is um, speaking of the Prophet Muhammad, Allah has commanded you to recite to your people, again, to who? To your people, the Quran in one dialect. What's a dialect? It, may, it might have different dialects in the same language, right? A dialect is a version of a language, a version of the language, right? That a group, like you might have a group of people who speak a certain dialect, even though we're all talking English. If, for example, if you go to Louisiana right now, they talk in English, but you won't understand the word they're saying. You understand me? So Allah has commanded you to recite to your people, not to you brothers in Philly, not to you brothers in Chicago, to the Arabs, right? The Quran in one dialect. Upon this, he said, who's he? Muhammad. Muhammad is responding to Allah's request. I asked for, I asked from Allah pardon and forgiveness. My people are not capable of doing it. His people are not capable of reciting the Quran in one dialect. Why? Because these people are many, right? And they have different dialects. He then came for the second time and said, now who's coming? This is uh, Jibril, their version of the angel Gabriel. They, of course, they steal everything from us. We're going to get into all that. Their version of that angel Gabriel, they call him Jibril. He came a second time to deliver the message. Allah has commanded you that you should recite the Quran to your people in two dialects. So the one was not enough. So he said, you know what? I'm going to give you a second dialect 
to recite to the people. Upon this, he, the so-called holy prophet, again said, I seek pardon and forgiveness from Allah. My people would not be able to do so. So he, who, Jibril, came for the third time and said, Allah has commanded you to recite the Quran to your people in three dialects. Upon this, he said, I ask pardon and forgiveness from Allah. My people would not be able to do it. So this is three different dialects and it's still not enough. He then came the fourth time and said, Allah has commanded you to recite the Quran to your people in seven dialects. So he skipped the, the others. He went from four to seven dialects and in, and in whichever dialect they would recite, they would be right. Why do I read this? If the people who speak Arabic because of the different dialects, they can't understand the Quran or they can't recite the Quran. How the hell are you, a brother who, not to attack you, brothers, you know, I'm doing this because I want to help you, brothers. A brother who went to jail and joined a gang called Islam for protection. How are you going to be able to recite it and understand it? If the people who were sent to, number one, the prophet was, the so called prophet was on earth with them and he could not teach them the Quran and, and he, they had to give him seven different dialects just for him to be able to teach his people you don't even speak the language you don't even know the culture you mimic it but you're going to understand it you're going to recite the Quran it's not for you if the people who were sent for can't understand it how are you going to understand it Why don't you find your prophet? Why don't you find your God? So you could be strong in following him. You understand what I mean? I'll, I'll end it with a, you know, a, a example. Like you look at the wild and you look at the lion and you look at the cheetah, you look at the jaguar, you look at the puma, you look at the bobcat, you look at the panther, you look at all these different species of cats each one follows its own culture you don't see the the panther with stripes on him or spots on him you don't see the lion shaving his mane to look more like you know the puma everybody has their own and that's how they survive now, black man, you go in and you stand in the mirror. Are you looking at a black man or are you looking at an Arab? Are you looking at a black man or are you looking at, a, at an Arab? With your high waters and that goddamn knot on your forehead because you're faking praying all day, banging stones on your forehead, you know, to act like you're praying. Stop being an Arab, man. Stop being an Arab. This is what God said about it. Let me show you... Uh, this one verse in, in the Bible. The Bible that people who never received the Bible claim is corrupt. Let me show you a verse in the Bible real quick. It's in the book of Amos, man. It's in the book of Amos. Amos chapter 3, verse 2. Give me one sec. Amos 3, verse 2. What's that, man? Here we go. Here we go. This is what the book of Amos chapter 3, verse 2 says. You only. Now, here's, the, here's our you. Here's the you we should be looking for. 
The other youths we just read about, all those youths were about who? The Arabs. Now, when it says when it says you here, this is not speaking about the Arabs. <laughs> the, the Arabs have no business here. The East India has no business here. The Pakistani has no business here. You only have I known of all the families of the earth, black man, Hispanic man, Native American Indian man. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. That's God talking to you, black man. He's not Allah talking to some Arab. This is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who made a covenant, made covenants with your forefathers, speaking to you. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. He don't know them Arabs. He don't give a damn about them, man. He knows you. Therefore, he's going to punish you for your sins. Think about it like a child who's misbehaving in class. Let's say the whole class is misbehaving. When that child's parent shows up, he's not showing up to discipline the whole class. That's why we suffer the way we suffer. You understand what I mean? That's why we suffer the, the way we suffer. I mean, remember that, black man. Yeah, we have no business in Islam. Absolutely no business. You know, with that, we are the ISUPK under command, Jay Hanna. We stood at 1 West 125th Street Hall, New York. We teach blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians that you are the real Jews. Christ is a black man. Moses is a black man. The Israelites, the real Jews, the Israelites of the blacks, Hispanics, neighbor, make any man. Remember that. With that, we'll say 